Hello, this is Nick Norman, and I'm an IT Asset Management Solution Consultant here at ServiceNow. Today, I'm going to walk through a demonstration of a new feature within Enterprise Asset Management from our latest release, Tokyo. The feature we'll be covering today is our Enterprise Asset Recall Workflow. First, let's talk a little about the use case for this functionality. From time to time, asset managers receive asset recall notifications from manufacturers and regulators. A recall notification usually specifies model, serial numbers, and remediation, which can be repair, replace, retire, or notation. For each recall notification, asset managers need to create a recall order and assess the impacted assets. Asset technicians need to perform recall remediation action on those impacted assets. Enterprise Asset Management lets users create and manage recall orders. It will find impacted assets and start proper recall flows. These flows will guide users to perform one or more tasks and set asset states properly when users close each task. Using Enterprise Asset Management, users can keep track of recalled assets and the progress of remediations. Let's talk a little bit about the recall flow. The recall flow is a very comprehensive and powerful tool that can streamline and automate what is otherwise a very burdensome process, especially customers with transportation assets, medical assets, or assets that generally receive recall notices on a regular basis. Customers that receive those notices do not have an easy way to identify and execute on those impacts. With our system, it can be easily identified through model numbers, serial numbers, or a range of serial numbers, or even VIN numbers, and we take the remediation action that was included in the recall notices and apply it to a workflow and trigger a flow against those specific remediation actions. For example, notation. If a notation um, comes through, we would apply instructions that will be added to every asset record impacted by that recall and how to better use the asset. Maybe we need to replace the asset with a new one and then ship out the old asset. Or in cases of repair, if we need to repair the asset, we can send text out either off-site or have it completed on-site and fix that asset and then have it reinstalled. Or if we need to retire the asset from service, we have that built in as well. Our flows will take care of every possibility in the recall process. Now, let's take a look at one of these in our demo. So, we are currently in the Enterprise Asset Workspace, specifically within the Inventory module. Here you can see your overview of inventory, stock rooms, stock rules. Um, in this case, we're going to go ahead and look at our open recall orders. We can see here from the dashboard that we have three open recall orders. We see a few here with different remediation options, uh, notation, replace, repair. Um, in this case, we're going to look at the Detroit diesel engine model, and we're going to go ahead and work on this recall. When we open the recall order, we can see the details. We can see the source, uh, what's the remediation uh, process, what model we're using specifically, as well as the serial numbers associated. If we look at the assets um, that fall under this recall, uh, we can see um, all the ones that are being um, captured by those serial numbers. We can see them in uh, various locations as well, New York, Santa Clara, um, and the different rem uh, remediation actions listed over here. Currently, we're in the prepare stage, and in this case, we're going to go ahead and scope our location to just Santa Clara and just focus on those assets for now. Now, You'll see here we have 20 assets. When I scope for Santa Clara and save this, we'll see a reduction in the asset count. So we can see that our scope has been reduced to just the assets within Santa Clara. If we were to update serial numbers as well, we could scope them that way, uh, since serial number is a unique identifier in this case. But in this case, we'll go ahead and begin the recall process. When we begin that recall process, we can take a look at uh, one of our asset records here, and we can see that we now have a task assigned uh, to this asset. If we go ahead here and look at the current task, we'll see some details here. We can see the state is still in use, but we have kicked off our prepare step. 
it is going to be an on-site repair. Let's go ahead now and assign a tech uh, to go and complete our repair. So we'll assign Bob Techie. Now we'll go ahead and save that. So now Bob has been assigned uh, to repair this, but if we want to include more assets, we can go ahead and include all of our assets uh, that we scoped in uh, from Santa Clara to be completed for this recall. So in this case, we'll go back and um, go ahead and scope in all of these assets to prepare for the recall. And from there, we'll go ahead and close the task. Now we can see that this step for preparing has been closed and complete. Go ahead and reload our task list here as well. Now we can see that prepare is closed and complete. Now Bob wants to move forward with actually repairing these assets. So he goes and opens up our next uh, step in the flow. You can see here that the state has been, has been uh, moved from in use to in maintenance. Now when Bob arrives, the assets are in maintenance and they're not currently in operation. So let's go ahead here and also include our list of assets and we're gonna repair all of them and uh, complete this step. So Bob's on site, he does his repairs, selects all the assets that have been repaired and then goes ahead and closes out the task. We can see now that um, our repair task is closed and complete. If we wanted to enter any additional information or work notes or dates, we could do that as well. Coming back to our task list, we can see that these steps have been completed and that from our recall list, that one has been complete. That concludes our demonstration of our recall order flow here within Enterprise Asset Management uh, from our latest release, Tokyo. Thank you.